All right, so today I'm going to be tying um, just a just a hopper pattern that I had seen in a fly tying magazine a number of years ago that has uh, caught me just tons of bluegill since. Um, you know, I've messed around with tons of different colors. I decided just to go black today because could kind of imitate pretty much anything. A big spider, um, maybe a beetle or a cricket, something like that. Just a lot of different terrestrials. So um, <clears throat> I'll get to tying it. So the hook I'm going to be using today is uh, Mustad 3366 and that's in a size 6. Just a nice strong hook. The thread I'm going to be using is uh, UTC in the 140 black. Just want to get some thread on there. We'll clip off. The very first thing we're going to do is just tie in some uh, antenna. Okay, so we'll just get a little hunk of rubber legs, uh, fold it in half, and then we'll tie it right here at the hook eye, pointing forward. And then you can tighten up. Alright, if you want a nice clean cut, just pull, trim close. And clean up the very ends. All right, so just put down a base of thread, heading back just to the bend of the hook. We've cut about a two and a half inch length of black two millimeter foam, and uh, what? I, and that's about five sixteenths of an inch wide. I'm just going to go ahead and trim a point on the very end of that. That'll help relieve some bulk when I tie it in. Just go ahead and cinch that down. Work forward with a couple of loose wraps. And then you can head back and clean it up as you go. Alright. So our body is going to be about two-thirds of the fly here. Next thing you want to tie in is your ribbing, which is just going to be D-rib in black, medium. Now with the D-rib, there's a flat side and a curved side. Tie it with the flat side up. This will help make sure that the curved side is facing up when you go ahead and start your, when you start your wraps. Just stretch that tight. As you tie that in, and it'll kind of keep some bulk down for you. Alright. So now the next thing we want to do is tie in our body material, which is going to be this uh, pearl cord braid in black. Kind of almost looks like a uh, peacock color. So just tie that in the length of the body. Just try to keep that on top as you tie it in. Alright, so now you can just go ahead, touching turns, wrap that pearl braid forward. Go ahead and tie that off. Okay, and trim that off nice and close. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is fold this foam forward 
but make sure that you kind of fold it so that it ends right here at the at the back of the hook and then you can go ahead and tie that off at the end of the body here make sure you kind of keep this <clears throat> on top of the hook as best you can so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our D-rib and making sure that the curved side is on top I'm just going to press down on that foam and then rib that forward trim your excess now what we're going to do is just kind of cinch just touching our thread turns one after another we're going to work our thread forward kind of cleaning up where we trim the D-rib and then also cinching down that foam and we want to go all the way up to the hook eye with this just keep working those thread wraps forward nice and tight and then every once in a while just check and see how close you are to the hook eye We're getting pretty close here. Just a couple more. All right, looks like we're there. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and tie in our underwing. I'm going to use some uh, deer hair tied in black. You just want to snip off a pretty good sized clump maybe uh, half a pencil just when you do trim deer hair off the hide trim as close as you possibly can that that ensures that the next time you go to cut a hunk that you can that you can cut those long too if you start cutting them up away from the hide they have a tendency to the short hairs have a tendency to bulk up and it's hard to get get your cut nice and close the next time around so now just kind of take out any loose or broken fibers by combing out the ends of these. Now we're ready to put it in our stacker. Just put those in tip first. Give it a couple taps on the desk. All right. And then what you should have are your tips all nice and lined up. So you can just grab those. And then for length, you're looking to about the end of the body here. So just kind of secure those down with a loose wrap while holding those tips. and then look and see what you got. And if you're happy with that, you can go ahead and clip these ends and finish tying them off. And just kind of hold down those deer hair fibers as you finish tying off there. And kind of tighten up as you come back if you have to. Okay, so there's kind of a look at what you what you should have after that. So now we're going to go ahead and just dub a head. And like I said, I kind of like to mess around with the color on this colors on this pattern. So I'm making a darker head. Um, the one I showed you before has a peacock dubbing head. Um, this I'm using uh, just a black hairy ice dub by Hair Hairline Dubbin. Just go ahead and dub a small amount on there. You're not going to need much, and you want this pretty tight. Um, just enough to kind of put a layer of it over your over your thread wraps. Just 
All right. And just dub this, go in backwards, because this is where we're going to finish off the fly. Okay. It's now taken. Fold that foam back and then tie it off right where you ended the body. Just a couple loose wraps to begin with. <clears throat> now what you can do is you can go ahead and trim this off just about where your uh, where your ribbing wraps start. That kind of forms your wing case, I guess, if you want to call it that. And then what I like to do is just trim a, a little angle off of each of the corners, like so. Okay, so now we're ready for our legs. Just got a little length of black uh, rubber leg material here. I'm going to fold that in half once and trim it. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. And then trim that. And now I'll do two legs on either side. Just secure those in. Right on the side of the fly. And for these ones I just like to let my thread hang. Offer those up to the side. Okay, and then you can trim those kind of as you see fit. Um, I like to keep them fairly long, at least extending to a little bit past the back of the fly, just like so. So you got quite a bit of leg material on there. And now the last thing I do is I'm going to tie in um, some some material that I'm going to use so I can spot this fly a little easier on the on the water. And what I've been doing lately is just kind of experimenting. I have some with uh, with foam. Um, a lot, the one that I showed you as an example before I begin, that has a bright orange egg yarn on there. And then uh, material that seems to really show up well is, uh, is just this ice stub in the UV hot orange. It's going to take a good sized clump of that. Tie it right on top of the fly. And fold that back. And then we're ready to wet finish. Just one, two, three. That should be good. Now, what you want to do is just take this dubbing, pull it up, and trim it to about any size that really works for you and that should be good enough to allow you to be able to see this fly when it's when it's on the water so that's pretty much the fly um, I'll just finish it off with a little bit of head cement and that's ready to go you got your uh, kind of antenna on the front you can trim those to whatever size you like I like them a little bit shorter so um, that's the fly um, hope this Hope you get a chance to tie it and uh, try it out. Like I said, anywhere you got bluegill, um, some some bass, and maybe some crappie, uh, you know, on a nice warm summer day, uh, fun to give these a whirl. Uh, you can get them. Usually get the the panfish pretty well excited and and feeding off the top with this one. So good luck. Hope it hope it catches a fish.